I'm Jennifer, and today I am making an Asiago cheese. The method is pretty straightforward. You heat the milk to 95 degrees, add the cultures, let it culture, add the rennet, let it set up. Once there's a clean break, you cut the curd, stir it a bit, and then you're gonna raise it to 106 degrees over the course of 20 minutes, so it's kind of a slow rise. And then you heat it to 118 degrees over the course of 10 minutes, so it's a little bit faster, and then we're gonna press it. So. That's the flow of it. We're gonna make it. For high temperature cheeses, you need thermophilic cultures. My thermophilic culture that I'm going to use is yogurt. The recipe I am following, following loosely, calls for freeze-dried cultures. Just going with yogurt, it's cheap, it's fast, it's easy. I have a lot of it. The milk is not yet to temp. It's only like 65 degrees, but I add some of it to my yogurt to thin it out so that it dissolves better. Just dilute it a little bit. The milk is 95 degrees now, so we're going to add the calcium chloride. Stir that in quick. There's seven and a half gallons of milk. It's a mix of Jersey milk and Holstein milk. I have skimmed off most of the cream, though there's still a fair bit of cream. And then we add the yogurt that I have diluted with a little bit of milk, so that just gets poured through. There's just a few little clumpies. I just let it incubate for 30 minutes to culture. So this has been culturing for 30 minutes and now I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of rennet diluted in water. This sets for 25 minutes. It's been 25 minutes, so we're going to check to see if there's a clean break. You can see the ripples don't look too liquidy. I can press down and it's pushing, but we'll see how it breaks. I think it's a clean break. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I was recently watching somebody else and she does her clean breaks by going down and then lifting your hand up and if it splits, it's a clean break. Yeah, it's a clean break. Good, that was only 25 minutes. This is a higher temperature cheese. It's been incubating at 95 degrees instead of like 85 or 90, so it goes faster. So what I'm going to do is cut the curds into inch cubes, half inch cubes, something like that. Let it sit for five minutes to firm up a little bit, then come back through with a whisk, let it sit for another few minutes, and then I start cooking. It just kind of firms it up a little bit more. Let it rest for five minutes and then I'll check. All right, five minutes is up and now you can see the whey has cut it on top. So it's already coming out as the curds heal. And I'm gonna take the whisk and just break it up even more.
So right now it is pretty much broken up and I can cut up more later as I go through. Don't need to worry about that, but it's, hello, I'm filming. I'm gonna let this sit for another five minutes to heal even more. And then we'll start heating up the curds. It's been five minutes, so now I'm gonna take out some of this extra whey so I can stir it more easily without it splashing over. And now I'm gonna stir this for about 10 minutes. It's still off heat, just to firm up a little bit. And as I find big pieces, I'll just break them up. Here's a good book, Tasha, if you need a book to read. All right, it has been 10 minutes and it is looking fairly cut up, fairly fine. It's ready to start heating. So I'm gonna turn this on low and let me temp this. It was 95 when I last temped it. And right now it is Oh, it has dropped. It is 91.6, 91.8. So it has to go the whole way up to 106 right now every 20 minutes. So I'll just stand here and stir and bring it up. Knowing that it has about 14 degrees to go, it's a pretty big jump. So part way through, I might increase the heat. For now, I'll let it start out slow and go for a good five minutes before I change the heat at all. Right now we're at 106 degrees, right around there. And the curds are... Pretty good. It's supposed to go to 118 degrees now, so I'm gonna keep it on low. And I'm gonna start stirring with the spoon because it's gonna to get too hot for my hand. Everybody says that you're supposed to use the squeeze method. This is what the recipe says, that you're supposed to take the curds and squeeze them, and if they hold their shape, then it's done. So this is my big question that I'm trying to figure out because I can squeeze them and they hold their shape. So this should be done, but it's only 106 degrees. So this is the part that I have not ever understood. And this is my hundredth cheese today. Some of these curds still look a little soft to me though. A little, not quite as rubbery and springy as they should be. I'm gonna continue going. I might not take it all the way to 118 because if you overcook these, they just get drier and drier. I'll show you again curds that look fairly broken apart, squeeze, and they stay together. So maybe maybe the fact that they're falling and like kind of splitting right there is a sign that they're not all the way together yet. I don't know. I'm gonna crank it up, go for maybe three more minutes and then call it good. I don't know what I'm doing. It has been 10 minutes and we are at 115 degrees. It's supposed to go to 118, but I think I'm gonna stop I think the curds are cooked. I'm gonna show you. It's pretty hot for reaching in, but here's some curds. Ooh, grabbing some. So they feel drier, pretty much uniformly dry. I squeeze them, and I think that is holding its shape. Before I would do that, and they would kind of split right here and fall apart, just the center. So I think that's holding its shape pretty well. So I'm gonna say this is done, even though it's not quite at 118. I also recently learned that raw milk cheeses set up a little bit faster than cheeses made from pasteurized milk. This is my 100th cheese. I'm still figuring this out. So either I'm a really slow learner or cheese making is freaking hard. Or well, not hard, just lots of variables, lots and lots of variables. Feels pretty, pretty darn cooked, pretty dry, pretty good. Okay, we're gonna let this set for several minutes and then I'm going to pour off whey and then we'll put this in the mold. One of the things that I've learned about cheesecloths and high temperature cheeses, when they're heated to a higher temperature, like 106, 115, whatever up in there, it's better if you wet the cheesecloth with cold water and a, and a little bit of white vinegar, wring it out. It doesn't stick as much in the mold. You don't want the cheesecloth to stick to the cheese. So high thermo cheeses, wet your cheesecloth, add a little bit of vinegar to it, wring it out, put it in there, and then flip the cheeses every 20, 30 minutes for the first couple hours so that it doesn't stick. And get a new cheesecloth partway through if you need to, re-wet it and do, and do that, so. Added water, and now I just fix it. 
vinegar water, 50% solution. Bring it out. Mmm, smells like pickles. Caroline, I need your help, please. Let me like, fold it back. Do you just fold it? It'll go Ready? No. Get away. No, no, let's go wipe it up. So, there's nothing to wipe up. I thought I smelled one. Don't use a washcloth. You actually use this one because this one is going to go in the garbage. <laughs> High temperature cheeses are very easy to put in because they stick together pretty quickly. You don't have to mill the curd. Actually, I can get this whole thing in. I'm going to lift it up. This is very warm and malleable. And so it's, it's going to take a second to press down. That's not really right. But I'll just press it and then push it and it will go in its own shape. Job. What did I just do? I just shot out. Okay, it's really, that's not how you're supposed to press it. It should be broken up and condensed in there, but I didn't do that, so we'll see what happens. 12 pounds of pressure for 30 minutes. I'm doing it at about 30 pounds of pressure for 15, and then I'll switch it. It's been a little bit more than 20, 30 minutes, whatever it was I set the timer for, because I got a phone call. <laughs> Molded in very nicely. Look at that. No problems. Beautiful. Beautiful. A little cheesecake. And when you pick up hot curds like this or flip them, you can see the imprint of your hand. They're very, very pliable and squishy right now. So it's kind of cool. I'm going to do it about the same pressure, 20, 30 pounds, and I'll do it for another half hour or so and flip it just because I don't want it to stick to the cloth. And here we are after another hour. I mean, another half hour. There's a little hair in that. Ooh, bigger than I thought. If things get stuck in the cheese, I often use toothpicks to like pick them out if you see stuff. And I always wash my cheesecloth separately by hand. I do not put them in with the other laundry. So this is knitting together quite well. It's pretty compact because it was a higher temperature cheese, smaller curds, less moisture. And it is looking great. Still leaves the imprint of the hand at this point. Um, it's still pretty warm. I'm gonna let it go for an hour and this time. That's right around 45 pounds. What you making? I'm making, I'm filming. I'm making oh. an Asiago. You're filming right Yep. So it's been another hour. It's still a little warm. It's cooling down. I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna let it go overnight. So it'll go for another 14 hours or so at the same pressure. So I am doing it at 40. Take care of it in the morning. Here's my rosemary bush. So you want about, oh, I'm not sure. I get a good third cup, maybe. Maybe less, maybe it's a quart, quarter. I don't know how much you want, but I'm just snipping off a bunch and I'll strip off the leaves. You want it to be good and rosemary, it makes it yummy. There's no point in doing this if you're not gonna taste it, so, you know. I'm not even gonna measure. 
That's probably a quarter cup, three tablespoons. I just strip off the leaves from the stems. And so here we are, a pile of rosemary. I don't know how much that is, maybe a quarter cup. Dump it in the oil. And I'm gonna heat this in the microwave for about, I'm gonna say 40 seconds. I'm just guessing, just to make it nice and hot. Look at that. It's all fizzy and, and bubbly. My friend said he did this, heated it up just to sterilize the rosemary, cook it, like get any germs off of it. It's really hot right now, so I'm going to just take a spoon and do it with a spoon first. Then you're just gonna, it's not really rubbing in, you're just making sure it's all over the cheese. These bits of rosemary are there. I love rosemary. I think, you know, it should be a perfume. You just wear rosemary. Same with basil. The two of those are so, so fragrant and good. Like, they're just good. You know, you can also put rosemary with popcorn. In that popcorn video I did, I'll link to it up here in the little corner. But if you add with the, the spicy popcorn that has chipotle powder, uh, raw sugar, so it has hot pepper, has raw sugar, and you add fresh minced rosemary in with your popcorn, oh my goodness. It takes it up a notch, big time. This is gonna be so yummy. So I'm gonna get my vacuum sealer and we're gonna pack this baby away. This is not so big that I have to cut it in half. It's not so thick, it should fit in the bag. So I don't need to cut it first, which is nice. all that came off, so there's no pretty way to do this. I'm gonna try to clean this out so it suctions and seals. This may be a problem. Here it is, it's all the way sealed. There's not much around the sides, but we'll see. Guess I'll know later if I should have added a lot more rosemary or not. This is cheese number 100. So now this goes in the cheese fridge in the basement for two months and I'll flip it every week or so. We'll set it down here on top of the spice scooter and there it goes. We'll see. So I'm sitting here editing this Rosemary Asiago cheese. Yesterday I finished it, got it in the cheese fridge to age. You know how this is my hundredth cheese? I'm so proud of that. I've made a hundred cheeses. That one was my hundredth one. Well, I didn't put any salt in it. This is the first time I've done that. So I'm sitting here and I'm going through the videos and I get to the pressing parts and then I, the, the part where I'm pressing it, not the pressing parts, the pre part where I'm pressing it. And then it jumps to the cheese fridge and I'm thinking, I said I brined it but why didn't I film it? I realized I didn't, I didn't film it. I didn't do it. I didn't brine that cheese. So we have an Asiago that looks gorgeous that has zero salt in. <laughs> oh man. Well, so here's what we're gonna do. It's an opportunity, right? We get to learn something. So, and I'm just gonna keep this. We're just gonna do this. So here's the cheese, I went down to get it. My beautiful saltless Asiago. And we are going to open this up. I am going to coat this thing with seven tablespoons of salt and we're gonna seal it up again. So not only are we doing the rosemary thing, we're also doing the salt. This might be totally ruined or it might work. This is how you learn. You can laugh at me, it's all right. I'm 
I'm laughing at myself. Let's go, let's go, let's go salt this. So seven tablespoons of salt, one, two, seven, and a little bit more to grow on. We're gonna reuse this bag. I'm gonna dump in some salt just in the bottom. Sprinkle, might as well salt the bag because it's oily, right? So there we go, there's some salt there. And now we're gonna just salt this cheese all over. Gonna roll it in it. This is probably not gonna work. I mean, how in the world? There's already a rind on it. Brining is just so much more efficient. Okay, that's not sticking to it. So what we're gonna do, the rosemary is though, that's kind of interesting. That's just half of the salt, people. Snowball this cheese and salt. It's kind of pretty. I mean, there's that. If you're gonna have a disaster, you might as well make it look pretty. Looks like a sugar-crusted cheese. Okay, oh my goodness. You guys have to go into the bag, please, please, please. Maybe this will be the best cheese in the world. You never know. I'm actually gonna put more in. Put fistfuls of salt in here. Because I am screwing this up royally. I mean, if you make cheeses long enough, this is bound to happen, right? Please say right. Please say right. I'm not the only one who's ever done this. So we are now going to backpack it over here. Whoever said learning was linear, it's not. <laughs> learning is just a... It's just a pile of mistakes heaped on top of each other and you have to sift through them and hope something's good, something decent rises to the top. It's sealed, yes. I'm just gonna do a final seal on it, making sure it sticks. Oh, people. This is sad. <laughs> this is really sad. This is, this is a salt encrusted rosemary asiago that has oil in it. I, yeah. Here's what I think is gonna happen. I think the salt will work its way in. It will bring out some moisture perhaps. So it will get liquidy. I'm gonna keep it up here in this, in this cheese fridge up here. And I'm gonna be flipping it every day. I'm actually, you know what, I might leave it at room temperature and just flip it like this for a couple days on the counter. Hopefully that the warmth, the salt will up at work and then maybe in a week or so I'll have to get it out and re-air dry it and re-oil and rosemary it and backpack it. We'll see. We will see. I imagine it will need to have this salt probably at least four or five days. I think it'll take a little bit to work its way in, if it works its way in. Jeez. <laughs> oh my.